what we have here my friends is the CCTL1 transport and to the delight of my wife I set up a uh, workshop in um, my living room this is because I was watching uh, a prologue of Tour de France which has started today and it was just too cold in the workshop so I have my oscilloscope and laser power meter, multimeter you know, set of screwdrivers, isopropyl alcohol, cotton buds and some wine and uh, then I'm ready to um, to work on this player and I have and it's fixed now, it didn't play any CDs at all uh, as you see it is beautifully finished, it has like a you know, uh, automotive grade uh, metallic paint finish, probably won't come through um, in the pictures. So what is a TL1? TL1 is a um, uh, reasonably lavishly made uh, transport from CEC. Um, it is a belt driven one, there's one belt here you can see uh, and that drives the head and here's the second belt that actually drives the turntable. Inside of those two black uh, cylinders uh, are five dollar Mabuchi motors, the, the, the cheapest one with the lowest torque and I suppose that, that's the feature that uh, with the really heavy pack and it is he heavy it um, gives it stability. Um, electrically, um, in case transformer there. Um, deep down there, I don't know, probably you probably can't see it, um, there is a like a microprocessor and that is a standard Sanyo boombox control uh, board. Uh, same in um, TL5100 which is a budget players of theirs, the same in TL0, which is the top unit. Um, over there we have power supply, and that power supply um, is much more elaborate than in cheaper units. Sorry about the light, but they don't have a strong light in here. Maybe what I'll do, I'll uh, fire up uh, a torch and you can see it better now. But all this forest of wires there, is basically due to uh, the guy doing upgrades on it and he's not really an electronics guy, he's a mechanic and he stripped it all and and the whole um, uh, axis on which it all runs, the, 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 all the bearings and he rebuilt them and of course he was recapping them with um, some Elna Seraphines I think I just didn't have a small enough one, so he put a big ones and then ran wires to them. Artist, I think it is suboptimal solution, and uh, that you know, it's, it's just uh, asking for induction of noise into there. You know, I mean, <laughs> there is a reason why those uh, radial capacitors are, are put straight on the board, and luckily in here we have a transformer that's encased and, and there's a fair distance to the uh, logic board but still that shouldn't be done um, but that's not my brief, my brief is to make it go and as you see it does go um, nothing really more I can say about it I'll, I'll, I'll put it through the paces uh, but it, it works now fine it, it uh, you know it jumps tracks as you see without any problems and uh, and it can go back as well it scrolls forward first slowly and then it does faster and, and the same thing backwards uh, it's not really as good as um, 51XR, TL51XR but 51XR does not do the silliness of driving the head with the belt so that one just works like a normal CD player. In here, if you have a lot of tracks, you want to jump from 1 to say 15, well, you have to wait for it. You have to wait for it. Um, 
I want to be listening to. I, I put my um, workshop transport there, which is a um, uh, benchmark DAC, and it goes through electro component uh, um, for EC4 preamp to my Nakamichi Dragon speakers, which are, are powered. This is my sort of um, second system for leisurely listening to. Um, this also has a ASEBU coaxial and glass optical. If I had a cable, I could hook it up to my Vadia CD player and see how it does it. Uh, what I want to do now is to show you the output of all this frivolity. And as you see, it's hardly a square wave. It's actually pretty poor. It can. Um, uh, stop it and you can see it's, it's nothing like a square wave it's it's the verticals are not they're not verticals they just say wow <laughs> all sanyas do that some people fix that uh, like Lampizator did uh, others do not uh, it's not my brief and maybe it wouldn't sound that good if it was done uh, properly uh, a couple of tones for the benefit of the uh, owner and also I can then show you things here in more detail it's a standard Sanyo SF90 um, mechanism 6 and 6 uh, which are now becoming more expensive you actually have to pay like uh, $80 <laughs> a magnet stuck there and there <laughs> so obviously the guy that did the modification was into tuning um, so that's there. Uh, let me play. I, um, I quickly do a couple of, uh, of tones uh, before I play a CDR. I have to turn it off for that because in here there's a switch. I'll have to un remove the tape so it's easy to um, power it uh, off. So we go to track number eight, which is the biggest um, interruption data layer as you see it travels there, plays fine, travels there for a while we go to 15 and it does so too, so we have that one uh, taken care of um, I'll play a CDR because uh, just to prove that it uh, does it, this is my it's a fairly new CDR, but um, very, very poor reflectivity, and it um, it actually uh, doesn't play on some players. It's the hardest one uh, that I have, and it's there. Let me see. It's shot 4K, so I want to see how it's going to sound. Stereo wise, but to turn it down before I lose every subscriber that I still have.